Scrap. In Rust, Scrap is everything. It's how you advance, it's how you build your home, and it's how you have fun. Getting Scrap is everybody's goal, even if it's just to get something else down the line. However, obtaining that Scrap requires venturing out into the wild, farming barrels, roads, and running monuments, all the while at risk of losing it all. And that's where today's base comes in. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to produce up to thousands of scrap per hour per person, all from the comfort of your own base. Whether you're playing on an extremely high pop server and need a break from the action, or you just refuse to participate in that prim life, getting scrap easily is going to change how you play the game completely. Before we get into cranking out the scrap, we need to build a very specialized base. In order to do this, we're going to want to find our favorite fishing village. Heading on over, you're going to want to get yourself a scuba tank and maybe even some flippers. Consider it an investment. Sticking close by for security and ease of access, we're heading back to the beach. With your kit acquired and ready to build your base, I like to get pretty close to the fishing village. So basically, as soon as it lets me build, I'm going to start building. Placing your first foundation just above the water level, we're going to start building into the ocean. Now, how far you go out into the ocean depends on how quickly the water or the ground drops. And you're going to want to build out four half walls down. Once you reach that four half walls down, we're going to go ahead and build a triangle on either side and destroy our pathway back. From this point, we can go ahead and surround this with walls leaving ourselves a doorway on either of these sides back here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and build an airlock into it. And we can start upgrading already. Down here, you can leave these open if you want, or we can actually use these as vending machine storage. It's entirely up to you and not a required part of the build, but if you're not going to utilize it for vending machines, you're going to want to use a wall. The side directly opposite where I've got the door here, we're going to keep open and not place a wall there. Coming up, we're going to seal these in as well. And continue building up. Remember to seal in the walls on these areas here, leaving just that one initial triangle open. Coming to the surface, we're going to seal in those same sides, leaving just this formation here. Now we are going to place a temporary shelf here just to give us something to walk on. At this point, we can lose the flippers and we can get a door properly installed. Add in walls to close in everything else. And throw down your TC. Once your TC is down, we can go ahead and lock in this area here. And get ready to close the roof, but we're not closing it quite yet. Instead, you're going to leave this open triangle up, and you're going to work your way up there. This is only temporary and one of many options to get to that roof. Once you're up here, we're going to start preparing to seal it in, but we need to add half walls around this area here. Go ahead and upgrade all of those half walls and we're going to place a triangle here at this point a very important step for this base is you'll need a repair bench placing a repair bench as far back as we can so that you still have access underneath we're then able to place a couple boxes up here one box gets placed right over here basically as far back as we can go and another box placed in the front once that's done, we can go ahead and seal in this area and work our way inside. Now you might be thinking this is an odd base and I wouldn't blame you. So far, this is definitely not your traditional base build. But that's because this base doesn't function for traditional purposes. Instead, we're using this base entirely for fishing. In order to do that, we're going to need to acquire a chair and you're going to want to place it basically on the edge of the tile. Once placed, we can actually go ahead and destroy this piece here and prepare to live our fishing life. 
Obviously, in order to do that, you will need to acquire a fishing rod. You can either do that by farming barrels at any of the substations usually found near a fishing village, swimming out to one of the floating junk piles and acquiring mats there, or simply heading over to the fishing village. Here, you could buy another fishing rod or two. Under ideal circumstances, you're going to operate with at least two fishing rods and that repair bench handy so that you can fix it anytime it gets near damaging. Next, you're going to need to acquire some bait. By either finding some animals or acquiring bait at Fishing Village, you're going to need to get some initial bait to start fishing. In order to catch a shark, which is going to be our goal, you're going to need bait of 5 or 10 grade. When clicking on your bait, you can examine it and see that it does have its bait scale. Once you have your bait fit into your fishing rods, I usually split them evenly, you aim for the back corner of this base, and you'll see just that that back area it does go blue every time, and learning that sweet spot's pretty simple. With this base design sitting here fishing, you just simply have to look down, and your fish will never escape. It simply runs itself into the walls and eventually tires itself out. At this point, you want to very leisurely try to bring in that fish, without irritating it too much causing your line to snap. You have all the time in the world, but you're, but the better skill you are at fishing, the quicker this is gonna go. As you catch your fish, you're gonna wanna switch to your second fishing rod, which is gonna cancel the fishing animation. This will allow you to line up and get that next cast going. Eventually through fishing, you're gonna acquire a lot of lower fish and some bigger fish. The lower fish, you're gonna wanna cut up in order to get some more bait, and as you catch bigger fish, fish that are worth value 10, you're going to use those to fish for sharks. While this can take some time and patience, ultimately you get the hang of it fairly quickly, and it allows you to skip past all the hassles outside. I find this method to be absolutely perfect if you're just sitting back trying to get scrapped before the end of a wipe or preparing into the next wipe. This can also be incredibly useful early into a wipe if you don't want to compete with other people at monuments, but you still want to get the same things. One thing of note is this is clearly not a main base. If anything, I recommend using a 2x1 nearby on the beach or just above on the hill, but by using one of those designs in the card in the top right corner. Now you might be asking yourself at this point a couple questions. One, why did we come this far out of the ocean? And two, why bother even fishing? Well, the answers to those are actually fairly simple. The first reason is coming this far out actually allows us to get ourselves into very deep water. Being in that deep water is the only way we're gonna catch ourselves some nice sharks. And the second reason, the whole reason that we're catching these sharks is we can trade those in very nicely. Once you've caught yourself a boatload of fish, we're gonna go ahead and deposit anything valuable. Taking just our fish and our flippers, we're going to dive on down. It's at this point we utilize our secret exit. Of course, you can use these vending machines as locker kits, which can be very useful whenever you're heading out. At this point, we're going to swim all the way to Fishing Village, staying deep underneath the water and avoiding any players. Once you get to Fishing Village, it's safe to come up. Being inside of a safe zone, no players can kill you, and you're good to go about your day. At this point, locate this black vending machine somewhere in the fishing village. And it's here we're going to make all of our scrap. From this vending machine, you can sell all of the fish you caught for ridiculously high prices. And the best part is, there is virtually no cooldown. Selling all of your sharks for thousands and thousands of scrap per hour, this is going to be your new way to get blueprints. Of course, none of this would have been possible without a video from Sigbog. Sigbog is a fellow Rust YouTuber who puts out amazing concise videos on mechanics in Rust. He recently put out a video on safe fish farming, and this is my personal take on that video. If you guys are looking for a more in-depth guide into the fishing aspect specifically so that you can narrow down that time and make it as quick as possible, Go on over and watch his video with a link in the description below. Of course, if you guys like this base design, if you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Until next time, enjoy your wipe and peace out.